Yeah, the, the freeform technology is unique in that it really addresses some of our previous issues that we've had, or I shouldn't say issues, but challenges. One being breathability, probably the biggest issue with the previous molded technology, and frankly, all of the traditional molded technologies is the lack of breathability. So the, basically, be, our foam formulation allows us to now create a trilaminate that we can mold into a variety of shapes but without having any breathability issues. So we're able to be almost comparable to traditional cut and sew seats. So that's a significant benefit to the next generation of our molded technology. And then capital. Uh, prior technologies and traditional technologies can be capital intensive. So the fact that we have a much uh, lower capital uh, process in place makes it extremely appealing now to low volume programs as well as high vo volume programs. Can be appropriate for special edition runs. So we see a lot of advantages with the capital uh, that, that is required to produce the product as well as the breathability. In addition, as you can tell, we've been able to bring forth a lot of design elements, a lot of surface uh, cues and elements. Uh, the cleanability aspect has been a significant uh, source of inspiration for us based on our ethnography that we've done with consumers. So we're proud to be able to bring forth a technology that not only addresses some of the traditional challenges of molded products, but also some of the challenges that we anticipate uh, for the future of mobility. You know, there's a lot of uh, DNA that each OEM has in their vehicles. Uh, the nice thing about Freeform is, is we can dial in the firmness or the softness of that topper pad and then obviously we can adjust the base pad formulation as well. So we've, we have, uh, through our comfort development process, our ability to create a comfortable product, both for what we call showroom feel, which is that initial softness, but still provide a long-term comfort uh, design for the consumer. And so uh, it really is OEM dependent as to the quote unquote initial firmness as well as long-term firmness that customers are looking for from their seats. You know, a lot of the elements that I talked about in my presentation really goes towards our, our whole theory. And I described earlier the lumbar theory, which has been the traditional S-curve that you'll oftentimes see in literature, versus our approach, which is what we call the pelvic support theory. So in the pelvic support theory, we're really stabilizing and supporting the pelvis, which invariably helps support and provide a much better support system for the, uh, for the, for the occupant. And so the shapes in this seat are really in line with our theory of how do we support the pelvis, how do we provide concavity in the seat, and how do we support the spine and the, and the occupant, the lower back of the occupant. So a lot of those elements are in this product, and I think that's might probably what you're experiencing now in terms of just a very comfortable experience when you're in the seated position. Well, I think the seat is probably one of the most complicated parts of the vehicle in my opinion because we're dealing with multiple elements. We obviously have a product that has uh, a lot of price pressure. Um, it's one of the more expensive parts of a vehicle so we're always under constant pressure to reduce cost or to ma maintain a very cost competitive product. We obviously deal with safety. Uh, we Comfort is clearly front and center with any product uh, such as a seat. Uh, ergonomics, craftsmanship, appearance, uh, thermal comfort. There are multiple elements that go into a seat that I don't think people oftentimes appreciate. And so that can provide a very challenging environment, which our engineering team is up for the challenge. Uh, and I think that's probably what most people perhaps fail to understand is the amount of engineering and complexity that goes into the design, engineering, and the assembly of a seat. Yeah, I, we've, we've been working on this technology almost, I'd say almost two years now, where we've, you know, it really started with the foam formulation. That was the key enabler to having us be here today. So it's through our internal chemists that we were able to come up with the chemistry that allows us to mold this trilaminate into the shapes that we have here 
in a such a way that allows us to literally use any textile that our customers desire. So it really evolved over that two year period to where we are now. So we completely develop our own formulas in chemistry. So these are Magna owned uh, formulations and chemistries. And for those customers who desire uh, different uh, chemistries, whether it's to support a, a recyclability initiative or a, a sustainability initiative, we actually have chemistries that allow them, uh, or allow us to provide them product that can provide them those types of different uh, um, products. Yeah, I, we're very confident that we would expect to see this in the market 2020, 2021 model year. So we're very happy with the progress we've made. A lot of the uh, customers that we've been working with are extremely excited and they see the value that we provide with Freeform. And so we're excited to have this come forward here in the near future. So for the, the performance enthusiasts and for those who like to be held in their seat, the ability to provide a lot of that concavity uh, is very desirable. So with the proper uh, theme, with the proper seat contour, we're very co comfortable being able to supply a product that can go as far as perhaps a more performance driven seating experience that you're describing. The concavity that I kept describing really comes into play. Yeah, I think what we're finding though is the, uh, the fact that we've been able to uh, tackle what we consider to be a number of significant um, pain points for not only our OEM customers, but the end consumer makes us very proud of the Freeform technology.